first. No, wait. Oh, shit. Wait. If you're like most car lovers, the biggest question in your mind has always been, why hasn't log cabin technology been applied to cars? Well, the good news is it has. Back in 1950, in this car right here, the Martin Stationette. James Martin was the man that invented the Martin Stationette, and he'd kind of been in the automotive industry for decades. He'd been making interesting, streamlined, three-wheel or teardrop-shaped cars since the 1930s, at least. This right here, the Stationette, in 1954, was exhibited as the economy car of the future. And keep in mind, this was in the 50s when Guji style was all the rage and everything looked like spaceships and cars had tail fins and jet engine like tail lights and bubble tops. And then Martin comes out and shows something that looks like maybe Abraham Lincoln would have driven it. Aside from looking like a cabin on the outside, they made the odd decision to use theater style seating inside. I've never seen these on any other car, but just like a theater seat, this bottom butt rest pops back up. But it, the reason it does that is because the cutouts of the car are strange enough that it's really the only way to get in it. And that's the same reason why the steering wheel has a big cutout out of the bottom. You think it just because it kind of looks cool, but no, it's because literally you would not be able to get out of the car any other way. The engine is down and back here, so it's kind of a rear engine car. Well, maybe more mid-engine. It's a Hercules stationary engine. This is the engine that was used. It's a four-cylinder engine, makes probably around 45 horsepower, but it was designed uh, for things like generators or stationary things where it would keep the RPM level at a steady level. It wasn't ever really designed for the kind of use you'd see in a car, but, you know, Martin didn't really care. And it's driving the rear wheel, the solitary rear wheel back here, through a Harley-Davidson sequential motorcycle-style transmission. It's all very, very strange. All right, here we go. We're going to see uh, what the Martin Stationette, the car, the economy car of the future, was like to actually drive. So let's give her, give her a start. There it is. Again, whisper quiet. The clutch is weirdly light. Whoops, I'm on gear. It's like um, it's like pushing down on someone's idea of a marshmallow. It's strangely light, and the gear shift, of course, is sequential and strange. And it's all done by this leather-wrapped handle. That strange and fetishy feeling. It feels like something you'd use to beat a horse with, or cudgel somebody, or use in some kind of creepy sex play. Something. It's a strange thing. The gears are reverse, first, neutral, second, third. So there's reverse, there's first, and I'm gonna uh, try to take it off. And the clutch point is weird, and there we are. Oh, this is strange. <laughs> Steering, of course, is weird, very weird. Brakes are pretty terrible. They're only on the rear wheel. So there's no actual braking on any of the front wheels, so you, know, you gotta leave plenty of space and mean it. Yeah, open this guy up a little. Listen to that, that roar. All right, let's go into second. That second, neutral. There's second. There you go. Yeah, and downhill, these brakes are not fantastic. It's not. It, you know, it clearly is not suspended like a regular car. It's wallowy, kind of. Like maybe, like a. It's more a houseboat than car. There you go. Yeah, it's kind of houseboaty. It's kind of actually not a bad descriptor. Because you wallow, it feels aquatic almost in a way, marine like. We're going to take this out into modern traffic, which should be amazing. Again, not having the lower third of the steering wheel kind of messes me up. Because when you're making turns, you have to turn this thing a lot. And you're always kind of grabbing a, a wheel segment that's not there. All right, I'm clear. And I'm off into real traffic. Woo, and there's a truck coming up, holy shit. All right, here we go. Wow, is it loud? Oh, here we go. Damn. Sure is more charming looking than any of these gray hunks of crap. Nice refrigerator, dumbass. How you doing? All right, Look at that reverse is first. No, wait. Oh, shit. Wait. Shit. Right? There we go. That's 
not ideal. I missed the arrow. It's not an easy transmission. Oh, look, the horn works. I'm sure as hell I'm not going to try to go out in front of anybody because that would mean splintery death. But I think I got it here. There we go. And we're off. Yeah. Meet the car of the future, people. You have nothing to fear but termites. Oh, that sounds terrible. We went over a little bump on the road and be, having no suspension makes every every bump either wallowy or terrifyingly clattery. Ugh. Let's just pretend it's 1950. Traffic's maybe a little slower. How would this feel then? And you know what? Honestly, it's still pretty terrible. <laughs> this is still not a fantastic commuter car. It's maybe better this wasn't the economy car of the future after all. But I don't mind the wood construction. It's like if you really wanted a woody wagon, but you thought, hmm, I don't like the drivability or practicality part of it at all. That's just not my thing. This thing is kind of ideal. I don't hate it though. That's the thing. It's weird and not a great thing to drive, but I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like being inside it. All the wood is kind of soothing in a weird way. Brakes I'm not crazy about. Boy, they do not do shit. So let's be honest. The Martin Stationette, even though it's basically weaponized charm, is pretty terrible to drive and use and would have been pretty terrible to live with. Which is kind of a shame because it is absolutely beautiful. Every little bit about it shows the best possible workmanship available. I'm not even sure who Martin got to build this for him or if he did it on his own. None of it's clear and none of it's known but it's all beautifully done. There's parts here you can tell from a Harley Davidson. There's this crazy bungee cord suspension. There's the Hercules engine there, but it's, they're all, none of these are really good ideas, but they're just all realized so carefully and nicely. And Martin wanted to sell these things for $9.95 and they were gonna be amazing economy cars everyone could have. But the honest truth is, it's good that this never happened. It's a beautiful machine, but it's probably best that there's just one of these beautiful machines in the world, because it's awful, but beautiful. That's how it goes. <laughs> God. Steering this thing is so weird. Nothing feels right about it. 